Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special, with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18plusbegumbleaware.org. Hello and welcome to this Monday Postcast. I'm Maddie Plell. Joined in the studio by James Hill, we have Paul Binfield from Paddy Power on the line as well. And on this postcast, we're going to look back at the weekend's action Chiefly the Arc de Triumph, of course. It wasn't to be with Enable Waldgeist, as we can see on the screen behind us, downing her in the closing stages. Also, lots of other Group 1 action to look back on from Longchamp, as well as Newmarket, the Sun Chariot Stakes on Saturday, and a good card at Ascot too. And of course, Newmarket, the good action there continues this weekend with the Philly Smile, Dewhurst, and Cesarich, and plenty more as well. So we'll give that a look a bit later on in the show as well. First off, Jimmy, let's have some immediate reaction from the Ark and, and Volgeese. There was a big atmosphere in the office, I'd say, and uh, sort of a, a strange race in many ways beforehand. Some of us weren't quite sure if everything was OK with Enable. Then, obviously, a furlong out. It looked as if she was going to do it, only for Volgeist to sweep in the closing stages. What do you think? Well, I mean, the, the, um, in terms of uh, the followers of Enable, it was all a bit of an anticlimax in the end. Uh, great shame that she couldn't do it, uh, but the race itself was fascinating, and you you have to hand mm. it to that uh, man Andre Farb, um, his eighth arc, and um, I mean it's been a while since he last won it, but actually if if you look um, at, at recent runnings, I think he's had uh, a horse in the first three for six of the last seven years, so um, his record in the race is is, is really tremendous. And uh, he produced uh, another beauty here in World Guys. He he's an absolute master at getting them. Uh, spot on on the on the day. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this horse, he, he tends to really thrive in France when he's gone abroad and when he's come over to the UK. He's not necessarily done as well. As I mentioned, Enable, she ran a great race. Take nothing away from her for finishing second. But a few of us were a bit, you know, Frankie Dottori got off her in the in the pre parade or the paddock, and uh, you know, we were watching her going down to post, thinking, does she look quite right? What was your analysis of her run? Because on form, she's already beaten Volgeist a, a handful of times. Oh yeah, I mean, on form, she she had the beating of all of them, absolutely. Um, I I personally felt she ran another great race, um, mm. and. It was just unfortunate. The ground uh, really didn't help her. Uh, the race didn't pan out um, how we would have wanted. Maybe if it had panned out differently, uh, she might have won it. Um, I'm not going to read too much into um, um, Frankie getting off her before the, uh, in the paddock before the start of the race and everything. Uh, I, I felt um, she, you know, she, early on she wasn't traveling that well, but as she turned into the straight, she looked the likeliest winner. Uh, but uh, I think she probably just hit the front too far out, um, and the way the race panned out, they went far too fast the leaders. Mm -hmm. It was just perfect for a, a stalker, and I thought um, Wallgeist's rider, Pierre Charles Boudot, I thought he, he judged the race perfectly. Um, uh, Challenge last of all, and that proved decisive. Yeah, he was actually off the bridle quite a long way out, Volgeist, but as the sectionals proved, he just stayed on better than anything else, didn't he? And as you mentioned, Pierre Shells, Budo, a great weekend for him with six yeah, winners. No, fantastic weekend for him. Mm. Um, Binners, I mean, obviously, that was a good result for you, wasn't it, Volgeist winning the arc? It was indeed, Maddie. Yeah, absolutely delighted. Valgeist won it at 16 to 1. Shame and Abel didn't win it for the sport. I think it would have been great, great overall in terms of publicity and PR in the future weeks and months. But nevertheless, Valgeist, tremendous performance. Um, the only downer from the from our point of view was we we did go uh, money back second, third, and fourth, and with Enable, Sotsart, and Japan filling those positions, um, the the result wasn't quite as good as. We might hope, but we'd have settled for Val Geist. And the one horse we were really worried about was Japan. We were took him on quite aggressively. And uh, if he had won, it would have been a stinker. But overall, uh, a brilliant race to watch, a brilliant spectacle. Everyone enjoyed it. Shame and Abel didn't do it, but what 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 a race. And, and, and we won the book. My company won some money on it. So what more can you ask? <laughs> we certainly would have preferred it if she would have came home in front but I think as we'll talk about in just a moment the ground was something very crucial at Longchamp yesterday uh, it was very different to Saturday where lots of winning favourites won there were lots of shocks at Longchamp uh, let's talk about the Abbey next and obviously Batash was a hot favourite for that Jimmy but it went to glass slippers this really progressive filly do you think there was something sort of not right about this result would you take it on face value? 
I wouldn't take it on face value. No, I thought there was a massive draw bias. Um, yeah. Where Batash was drawn um, away from the rail, um, I don't think any of those horses did well. In fact, uh, the, the last six home, all had, a, including Batash, all had a, a double-figure berth. So clearly it helped to be nearer the rail. Um, don't want to take anything away from Glass Slippers. Clearly an improving sprinter. Uh, another a Kevin Ra imp improver who clearly goes well on soft ground. Um, but I, personally, I, in hindsight, Batash shouldn't have run. I mean, I know he's won that race before on soft ground, but that wasn't soft ground. That was mm. desperate. Uh, and, you know, he's such a, a pure speed machine. You can't honestly be confident that he would act on a surface like that. And I would just forget that run, put a line for it. Yeah. He's, he's, he's you know, uh, just uh, not his day. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to think so, wouldn't you, with the way he finished? I think the key thing about the ground was, you know, obviously we go back to Enable. She'd handled soft ground before beating Gold Guys, but this was different. It, w it obviously rained a great deal at Longchamp, but then it had dried out. So it was sticky, tiring, tacky ground as opposed to sort of wet ground that they could get through. Yeah, and, and that has a particular uh, effect on sprinters because, you know, it's, it's all about speed. And if, if they can't really get a proper purchase uh, when, when they're galloping, uh, it's going to affect them hugely. And, and as I said, Patash is all about speed. Yeah. Uh, he's the, one of the fastest horses we've ever seen. And, and it, th those conditions do, weren't just con conducive to uh, the way he performs. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't think that uh, that is form that I would look on too readily in, in the future. Yeah, exciting filly though, uh, nevertheless. Let's talk about some of the two-year-old performances now. We had our big new winning the Boosak and Victor Ludorum. Wow, another star juvenile for Godolphin and for Shamadal. Obviously, Shamadal's had uh, Pinatubo Earthlight and now this Victor Ludorum winning the Jean-Luc Lagardère. Any prices on him for future targets, Binners? Yes, Maddie. Um, Andre Farb um, was suggesting that a French classic campaign could be in order for Victor Ludorum. Uh, so we put him into the French 2000 guineas at five to one first show. Um, we haven't got too many horses in the market at the moment, to be fair, Maddie. I think he's the only one. But uh, anyway, he's five to one for that. Um, if Andre does change his mind and decide to come to Newmarket for the uh, first classic of next season in England, um, Victor Ludorum is a 20 to one shot. But um, I wouldn't be back in that. A French classic campaign looks more likely. Yeah, it does, doesn't it, Jimmy? Yeah, I, I would say so. Um, and uh, he's proven that he handles Longchamp well with Pinatubo going for Godolphin um, at Newmarket, you, you, would, you would expect, uh, in May uh, next year. Uh, he, I think he's nailed on for the, uh, the French 2000 guineas. Um, and obviously he'd have a, a very strong chance in that because he's, he's got a proper turn of foot. Uh, I don't think that was um, the best Lagardère we've seen. Uh, for, uh, I think you know, we've seen better runnings than that of it, uh, but he's clearly got a good finishing kick and um, yeah, uh, the only way is up for him. Yeah, I think he's still very much a baby, isn't it? And as I say, that ground with a horse like him, who probably has that turn of foot, wasn't ideal, but he got the job done. Uh, Binners, what about our big no another big winner for Jessica Harrington? Her juveniles are just a brilliant, brilliant crop this season. Yeah, Juven um, Jesse having a great season over there in Neath. Um, Al Bigner is now 14-1 to second favourite for the uh, 1,000 guineas. Um, only one filly heads uh, above her, 10-1 to uh, favourite quadrilateral, quadrilateral, who has been supplemented for Friday's Phillies Mile. We'll, we'll be talking about that later. Um, interestingly, Jesse did mention um, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf for Al Bigner. Um, the race on Sunday at Longchamp was a win and you're in. And... Um, Al Bigner is six to one, second favourite for that race from twelve to one. We've only one one ahead of uh, in the market, and that's Dia, the recent Rockfell winner. Thanks, Binners. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure this was necessarily a particularly strong Boosak either, Jimmy. And this all she takes a while to find her feet, doesn't she? But when she does sort of find a stride, she's very strong at the finish. Yeah, well, I, I liked her. Um, I, I liked uh, her attitude, and um, she's got plenty of stamina as well. I mean, she had to, yeah. to win that. Um, and, you know, being by Zoffany, I mean, some of um, his progeny handle soft, but you wouldn't necessarily have thought that ground would suit. Uh, so she's clearly a filly that handles um, all sorts of ground, clearly got the right attitude. I'd be very, very interested if she went to the States for the Breeders' Cup. And, uh, you know, as for next year, she's a real 1,000 guineas contender. I mean, yeah, she, uh, Jessica Harrington's got two nice fillies at the moment. Yeah, the classics. She has plenty, doesn't she? And uh, interesting that Al Bigner, obviously in the Moyglare, I think she was in season. So there is a 
you know, valid excuse for why she didn't perform that day. Uh, as I mentioned on Saturday, it was a good day for punters with seven out of the eight ITB races going to favourites. Now, the main one we're going to talk about wasn't one. Bilston Brook, she won the Sun Chariot in, I thought, pretty emphatic, classy fashion, Jimmy. Uh, you know, a filly that's gone under the radar a little bit since winning the Guineas. If you remember when she won the, the 1,000 guineas, uh, she absolutely destroyed them. Um, she does seem to find her best form on the Roly Mile, definitely. Um, I have to say, though, I thought the second home uh, looked all over the winner of Furlong Out Voracious. I think she's very interesting for the future. She went past the leaders like they were standing still, and that was her first run since she won, won the Falmouth. Um, I think she'll come on for it. It looks like she's going to run again this season. Uh, I'd be very interested to see where, wherever that is. She's got an entry in the... QE2, um, and I'm expecting a um, big improvement from her on that effort. Okay, um, and Binners, I really like this story, the, the Billiston Brook sort of Sean Levy story, because they're not the most sort of well-known connections, although obviously he's attached to a big yard in Richard Hannon's. It's, it's nice to see the sort of underdogs get a, a big win. Yeah, absolutely, Maddie. Um, Bilston Brook has been a huge factor in Sean Levy's career, um, coming over to England uh, to Richard Hannon's from Aidan O'Brien uh, stable. Um, well done to Sean. It was great to see him in the winner's enclosure. Well done to Richard Hannon, actually. Um, I think it, he, he was suggesting that a change of scenery for Bilston Brook. He's, I think he's put her in the um, Everly Yard down, down at his stables. I think he's got a couple of yards there. Um, that seems to have worked the oracle. But Richard did say, you know, class is permanent. If you go and win a 1,000 guineas, you, you've got to be a decent horse. And um, the the bookmakers and, and the market wrote her off on Saturday, but she proved what a great filly she is. And um, I think Jimmy's quite right about Voracious. So Michael Stout was making the right noises after, after the race about her. And um, if she does rock up in the... QE2 stakes, uh, the, the 20 to 1 that we've got at the present time looks a, a, a little bit too big for me. Okay, thanks for that, Ben. As a, a quick word on some of that Asker action, Kinran, he finally got a win, Jimmy. Finally, and he's really deserved it because he's been knocking on the door for a long time now. Uh, I think he probably just about had his perfect conditions and trip, seven furlongs on soft ground, um, and he was well back beforehand, so clearly in good form. Yeah, no, he, he thoroughly deserved it. Uh, uh, that made up a bit for when I, um, I backed him at Royal Alaska when he was drawn on the wrong side. Um, it was very unlucky, I thought, on that occasion. But, uh, yeah, much deserved this time. Yeah, nothing ungenuine about him, he's proved. But uh, I've got to admit, I was kind of taken aback having back Greenside. It's like the one horse you get beaten by is Kinran. <laughs> you know yeah. something's happened there, but he yeah. ran good. Well, I, I think, you know, these horses, they get called names and they keep finishing second. But sometimes it's just, you know, uh, they, they're a bit exposed and a bit unlucky and uh, they get they get done for their own consistency, really. But, yeah, yeah. Good, good that he won. Yeah, and on the other end of the spectrum, Dakota Gold, another win for him. Yes. Uh, no, he's proving a revelation at the moment, isn't he? Uh, and Mike, Michael Dodds, once again, um, showing what a great trainer of sprinters he is. I mean, he just gets them to improve and improve. Um and interesting, you know, to see if he can make the, you know, the, the step up into group company. Yeah, exactly. Um, Mabs Cross, she also running the Abbey. Interesting if she steps up to six furlongs on Champions Day. Uh, we'll take a quick break now before we get stuck in to the action at Newmarket, including the Phillies Mile. What's my horse's handicap? The fact that you're backing him. Everyone loves a newbie. That's why Paddy Power Games are giving all new customers 60 free spins on daily jackpot games. New Paddy Power Games customers only, one per customer. T's and C's apply, 18 plus, begumbleware.org. Welcome back to this Monday postcast. As promised, we're now going to take a look at the action at Newmarket on a Friday, starting with the Bet365 Phillies Mile Group 1, uh, won last year by Iridessa. Uh, she's gone on to Group 1 class honours, and I think there's also been some other recent winners who have gone on and won Group 1s as they progress as well. So always a good race to follow this, and... Uh, had some supplementary entries, Jimmy, with quadrilateral and powerful breeze, two really promising fillies. Binners, before we go back to Jimmy, just run us through your betting for the race. Yeah, quadrilateral, one of those two you just mentioned, Maddie, 15 to 8 favourite. Then we've got Jessica Harrington's KN Pepper at 5 to 2. Her juveniles in flying form, as we mentioned in the first segment. 7 to 2, love. 6 to 1, powerful breeze, the other supplementary entry, and it's 12 to 1 bar. Let's discuss quadrilateral then, Jimmy. Really, really impressive last time. On form, do you think she's the, the sort of obvious one here? 
Uh, well, she's. I think she's probably got a bit to prove on for. Mind you, that the time she put up at Newbury was very impressive. I mm. think um, it was um, just slightly slower or slightly quicker than the older horse listed race on the same cart over the same distance. Uh, I was very impressed by her at Newbury. I love the way she finished off her race. Uh, I, I personally think she looks a real deal from what I saw there. Um, the weather forecast this week is pretty wet again. Although it doesn't look like Newmarket is going to get too much of it. No, so that, that's look, good good yeah. news for supporters of her because uh, she's a lovely moving filly. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see how she takes the rolling mile. Um, and uh, as I said, she has got a bit to find on form, but I fully expect her to find it. Okay. Guinea's favourite, as you say. So it'll be interesting to see if she can handle that track. Um, I'm slight, slight doubt there that sometimes when these horses post these amazing performances, I'm not sure if I truly believe it just yet but we'll find out we've got the likes of uh, love in there of course the moy glare winner how big boosted that form on sunday and been as you mentioned km pepper for jessica harrington who's flying powerful breeze again mentioned her at the top of the show who won the may hill so there are quite a few sort of established form lines in there yeah look so if, if they all turn up that he looks an absolute cracking cracking heat um I'm quadrilateral. I, I, I personally, I would take her on. I've, Roger Charlton's horse, two-year-olds, when they win first time, they often are very decent. But um, I, I, I think Love is a big price at seven to two. You, if you go and win a, a, a Moy Glare, yeah, as you said, the Al Bigner um, back the form up, and Daye did it. No, no, no. Um, yeah. Did it some favours as well, winning the Rockfell Stakes at Newmarket. I think Love is it should, in my opinion, and obviously our odds compilers know a hell of a lot more than me. But I think Love should be a shorter price than Quadrilateral. Do you know what, Binners? I think I'd agree with you on that one. I think with her form, she's probably more entitled to be shorter than Quadrilateral. But obviously, it's that age-old sort of debate: do we take proven form or potential? And in this case, clearly the punters are siding with potential with quadrilateral. Now, quickly, let's move on to the Godolphin Stud and Stable Stuff Awards Challenge Stakes Group 2. Now, the Lockinge winner in here, Mustachery, but he could have some interesting rivals, including Muhatha, the Greenham winner, Jimmy, who we haven't seen since he won that race. Which is a long time ago now, isn't mm. it? Um, um, back in April. Um, I think given the, the break that uh, he's had, you, you couldn't really back him with a huge amount of confidence. You'd be interested to see how he goes. I mean, there aren't that many entries in this, so this race could cut up a bit. Shine so bright was disappointing at Doncaster. He seemed to get a bit lost there. Uh, but he's had a great season otherwise, um, and he does seem to go very well on the Roly Mile. Uh, ground is a question mark. Looking at his pedigree, um, his, uh, his dam seemed to handle soft ground well enough. So I'd be hopeful that he could as well. Um, and yeah, this is what seven furlongs, isn't it? I think yeah. seven furlongs uh, on this track will suit him ideally. Yeah, it's his dream sort of trip, isn't yeah. it? In conditions for shine so bright. Binners, are you going to be taking on Mustachery? Yes, I am, Maddie. I mean, racing's a game of opinions. I, Jimmy suggested that Mahafa may, may, you know, he's been off 180 days plus, um, but I, I wouldn't worry about that. It was Mar Marcus Tregoning training, one of my favourite trainers. I think this horse would have gone well in, in the um, 2000 Guineas had Marcus got him got him there. Unfortunately, he, he wasn't able to, but he, he won the Greenham like a good horse. He was he's, he was very progressive, and um, I'll, I'll take on uh, Sir Michael's Matash with Mahatha. Again, I'm going to be in agreement with you, Binners. We're going to have to take a little bit on trust with him, but I think he sort of emerged onto the scene with plenty of promise and, and getting that weight from the older horses. I think he could could be one to watch on return. The, uh, the big handicap on Friday is at 4.10. It's the Bet365 Old Rowley Cup over a mile and a half, and we get the Melrose winner uh, back out here in Hamish, and he's got some really progressive rivals uh, up against him, Binners, but presumably he leads the market. Yeah, competitive looking race, Maddie, as you would expect for this uh, famous old handicap. Hamish, as you say, for William Haggis, heads to market 92, 7 Derivo, 8 First in Line, 9 Apparate, 10 Battle of Paradise and Herovian, uh, along with Sinjara, and it's 12 to 1 the rest. Yeah, I think Noel Mead's got a horse in here that I'm quite interested in. But, Jimmy, I'll go to you first. Uh, lovely race, this. Yeah, red hot, very competitive. Um, I'm going to go for Trushan here. Uh, he's uh, just two pound higher than uh, his uh, his uh, fine second at uh, Haydock last time. That was behind uh, a horse called Ranch Han. Now I think that one's been um, well punted on for the Cesarowicz. So um, how Trushan gets on here will be a good pointer to his chances the following day. 
Um, but this is uh, a horse who's progressing at a rate of knots. Decent attitude, stays well. I think if he handles the track, I think uh, he's going to go well. Yeah, you mentioned Ranch Hand there. I'm interested in him for Zarich. I think that's good form. I really like the horse. Um, so True Shan, a good pointer to that. Uh, Binners, what do you think? Maddie, I'm going to steal your thunder. I've, I've actually also gone for Noel Meads to do start. Oh, uh, Binners. I, uh, listen, we, we, we seem to be agreeing on everything this week, uh, Maddie, which is unusual. Uh, I think the Meath magician comes over comes over here with a nice horse. He, he was given a lovely ride by Shane Foley last time at uh, Down Royal when up to uh, to this mile and a half. Um, Shane won it cleverly by a fag paper and he seems to be an improving three-year-old. So I'll, I'll, I'll have a go uh, at him in a, competi- as I said, competitive heat. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely agreeing with you. As I said, uh, Shane Foley has had a brilliant couple of weeks winning Group 1s with uh, Mill Island. Now, Bigner, obviously, for Jesse Harrington, and hopefully he can partner another significant winner aboard De Duza for Noel Mead. Uh, we'll move on to Saturday now, and the feature is obviously the Cesarich, the... Uh, two mile two charge up the rolling mile we have the Dewhurst as well which is probably going to be uh, top of the list for a lot of people but we'll start off with this as our rich and um, won by low sun last year at a Willie Mullins inmate and there's another one at the head of the market this time Binners. Yes indeed uh, build me up buttercup for Willie Mullins this time five to one favourite and uh, eight to one Timoshenko for Sir Mark Prescott, who, who keeps emphasising in the media that he's never won the Cesarowitz. So uh, that that immediately throws up uh, alarm signals. Ten to one Land of Oz and Sneaky Getaway. Twelve to one um, Barbados Eminus, Great White Shark and Ranch Hand, and it's sixteen to one Bar. Yeah, an open race as you uh, as you think, Jimmy. Is there one that's caught your eye? Uh, there's always one that catches my eye in this race, Mads. Uh, one of my favourite flat races. It's fantastic. Um, I think with the ground on the soft side, I- I'm going to be very keen to side with a jumper, at least one jumper here, because stamina is going to be so important uh, given the conditions. I thought last year's race was a really good renewal. And uh, Coeur de Leon didn't run too badly 12 months ago. He, he also had a terrible draw. Um, he's a pound higher now, but crucially this season, he's struck up a good relationship with... Torrey Hansen, who takes off five pounds. So he's going to be a little bit lower in the ratings this time around. Um, I think this slower ground will, will suit him that bit more. Stays very well. Tremendous attitude. Um, like True Shane, he's trained by Alan King, whose um, horses are running really well at the moment. Um, big fan of Alan King. I'm a big fan of Alan King, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, I can see, yeah, see he's got a good, good each way chance. So. Yeah, he's always very solid at this level, running sort of Chester Cups and all those big staying handicaps. So you'd expect him to be thereabouts, wouldn't you, uh, Cord de Leon? Binners, who takes your fancy in the Cesarowitch? Well, good luck to Jimmy with that one. 20 to 1 chance and nice price for him. Um, I'm going to go for Ian Williams' time to study. Um, He's been running well. He was third in the Ascot Stakes over two miles, four furlongs. So um, I, th- I think he's a pro- he'll be a proven stayer over his two miles too. I don't, uh, Kieran Fallon rode him last time. I don't, I don't know if he'll he'll be available to ride him this time. I hope he is. He'll take a few pounds off. But if not, um, if Ian can book another top claimer for the ride, um, I think he'll be very competitive. Yeah, he sure will. Got some excellent form in the book, hasn't he? Time to study and, uh, as you say, certain to stay this trip. Let's get on to the Dewhurst now then, the one that we're all looking forward to. Enable, you know, for the fans, she couldn't quite do it yesterday, but maybe another star performance from Pinatubo will cheer everyone up a little bit. Uh, but Bally Doyle are going to try and uh, steal the show with Wichita. They've supplemented him, Jimmy. Uh, do you think he can be a threat to the good Olfin favourite? It's hard to see anything being a threat to Pinatubo, uh, what we saw like in the current. Um, I'm just going to be interested to see how he he, um, he handles the Rally Mile. The Rally Mile is a, a fairly unique track. You've got a lot of humps and bumps, and lots of horses don't handle it. Um, but, I mean, he hasn't been running on flat tracks. You know, the, the car and the good, Goodwood, his, his two impressive yeah. performances, they've been downhill, so we know he handles uh, undulations. And as well, of course. And Epsom as well, yeah. So... Uh, I'm not expecting it to be a problem. Um, the ground will probably be a bit softer than ideal, but I mean, really, he's so far clear of them um, from from what we've seen so far. Um, I'd be very disappointed if he got beat. He's, it seems very easy going and easy to handle, doesn't he? So I guess that will be in his favour at a track like Newmarket. Yeah, he's got a tremendous attitude as well. I mean, when you press the yeah. accelerator on, on him, he really goes. Um, I mean, 
fast two-year-old as I've seen over this distance for a long, long time, if not ever. So, yeah. Yeah. God, we're excited, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, Binners, how excited are you to see Pinatubo again on uh, Saturday? Oh, very excited, Matty. You know, he, he could be the next uh, sensation on the flat. He has, he's better. To win a national stakes in the way he did was just incredible. Um, we have, we've got a market up now, actually. We've got Pinatubo in there at three to one on, so he's not the biggest price in the world, but our punters buying money at that. Uh, four to one, Wichita. 13 to 2 Mola Fam, 12 to 1 Arizona, and 16 to 1 Bar. It's it's great that Wichita has been supplemented by um, Coolmore for this. That, that makes it very exciting. I, I remember after after he won the Tassel Stakes, um, I, a journalist did ask me for a quote for the Jewess, but um, yeah, he wasn't entered, and we we didn't think. We didn't think that he would be entered with Pinatubo in there, but well done to Coolmore uh, taking on Pinatubo and um, it, it'll make it more competitive and um, that, let's hope they're fighting it out in the final, final furlong on the rolling mile. Yeah, it'd be a brilliant uh, prospect, wouldn't it? Good that they're not shying away from a fight and gives the race another another layer or two. Um, before we take a quick break, just want to plug our mobile app. If you're interested in any of the horses that we've mentioned uh, leading up to the weekend, then you can go on the cards. You've got the uh, all the free bets that you need on there as well and you can bet through our app as well so make sure to download that if you haven't already i'm jose Mourinho. i know a thing or two about being special nearly dying in a laundry basket special winning the little jackpot on petty power games not special understood jose yes someone wins an average forty thousand pound jackpot every single day so if you win don't think you're special Daily Jackpots by Paddy Power Games. Jackpots must be awarded by 11pm and vary from day to day. Jackpot is shared with other operators. Available on selected games. T's and C's at paddypower.com. 18 plus begambleware.org. Welcome back to this final instalment of the Monday Postcast. Now we're going to take a look at some of the other midweek racing. I'll spin you through where we're at this week. Tomorrow it's Leicester. I believe they've got an inspection, so keep your eye on that. Brighton, Galway, Catterick and Chelmsford. Wednesday is Ludlow, Navant, Nottingham, Wincanton, Kempton, Newcastle. Thursday is Ayr, Thurless, Worcester, Exeter, Southall and Kempton. And Friday is that brilliant new market meeting we talked about. York, a good card there too, as well as Chepstow, the start of the Silver Trophy meeting and Newcastle as well. Let's get some next bests from the lads. Uh, Binners, I'll go to you first. What's caught your eye out and about this week? Okay, um, Catherick also has an inspection on Tuesday, Maddie, so uh, listeners might want to look out for that. Um, well done to ITV um, on Friday. They're showing two races from York as well as the Persian War novices hurdle at Chepstow, so that's brilliant. I think their coverage of the sport is immense. Um, and in the Persian War at 2.10, whilst I'll be cheering on my friend Max McNeil's The Butcher Said for Ollie Murphy if that runs, who's been very progressive, um, I think an interesting one in the race is Turnpike Trip at a current double figure price of 11 to 1 for Charles Burns. Um, I, d I don't know if Charles is going to bring him over to Chepstow, but I hope he does. He's won three of his four starts over hurdles and he was only just done at the uh, Galway Festival. So he's clearly quite good. And um, I think if Charles brings him over, that, that will tell its own story. Yeah, very useful when trained over here, wasn't he, at Turnpike Trip? I'll actually be off to Chepstow for the Silver Trophy meeting, so I'm very much looking forward to it. Likes of Altior and uh, Don't Push It, and loads of other horses, Q Card, this will crack, all won at the meeting in the past. So I'm hoping we can unearth another future star. Where are you at, Jimmy, this week? I'm very much at Chepstow. That's that's the meeting I've been looking forward to for a lot for a long time. It's uh, the start of the jump season proper, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I had a look at uh, the entries for Friday, and uh, the one that definitely catches my eye the most is Liz Nagar Oscar, yes. uh, who is set to make his chasing debut in in the free twenty there. Um, really looking forward to seeing him. He was a, a very classy hurdler as a novice last term. Uh, won a Grade Two, finished uh, fifth in the Albert Bartlett's. Um, and he's got plenty of, of speed aligned to his stamina. So he's a very exciting prospect. Looking forward to seeing him if he takes his chance. Yeah, I think that's the two miles, seven and a half furlong uh, novice, isn't it? So Thistle Crack did win that. My knowledge, <laughs> niche knowledge there. Anyway, you can clearly tell we're all looking forward to Chepstow this week, but a good card at Newmarket, as I mentioned as well. Now it's time for the midweek nap. This will not be beaten. Take it away, Binners. 
Well, Jimmy said that Chepstow is the start of the flat season. He's absolutely, uh, sorry, jump season. He's absolutely right. It used to be the Paddy Power meeting when we sponsored there, but uh, it's now Chepstow. But I'm going to I'm stick with ITV4, uh, as I said, really well done to them. And I'm going to go for the 350 at York, uh, a mile and six furlong handicap. Going to go for Ray right. Beckett's Moon King. Uh, this one was fourth at Haydock last month um, when he was drawn 11 of 12. Uh, before that, very, very progressive, winning a few races in a row. The winner came from stool two that day, so uh, and Moon King came very wide entering the straight. I think he's better than that. He is entered in the old Rowley Cup at Newmarket on Friday as well, but I think he'll probably run at York at 3.50 on Friday because one mile, six furlongs is his trip, and I think he can return to winning ways. Brilliant Binners, yeah, he was a big eye-catcher last time at Haydock, wasn't he? So hopefully he can return to winning ways, as you say, uh, for yourself. Jimmy, who's all the money going on this week? Uh, it's going to be going on Dolphin Square at Ludlow on Wednesday in the 12.45. Um, returning to the fray for Philip Hobbs, um, he's also got an entry at Worcester on Thursday, but I think Ludlow, uh, over two and a half miles, his, his favourite trip is where he'll likely uh, take part. And uh, Dolphin Square, uh, proved he go goes well fresh when winning at Exeter last season uh, and he's kept his novice status uh, for the, the next month or so. Uh, he's got experience in the bank um, and I'm expecting him to make it count and he'll like the conditions too. So Dolphin Square for me. Brilliant. Thanks, Jimmy. And thanks, Binners, both for your input today. Uh, it's really exciting time of year, isn't it? With the uh, jump season warming up and the flat season warming down. Uh, as always, Bruce and the team will be back on Friday with the Tipping Postcast. So be sure to tune into that. We'll see you soon and best of luck with your bets this week. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 18 plus,